Happy Tuesday, January 7th, 2025. We've got a major update for you on our continued coverage of this significant winter pattern that we've been in and will continue to be in for quite some time. Now, I know everybody wants me to talk about the uh, upcoming snowstorm, and don't worry, we will, but let's start with the cold, okay? This is the immediate thing that we've got going on here. If you went outside this morning like I did to get here uh, to the weather house, you just about froze your butt off. It's cold out there. If you thought it was cold this morning, especially in the Ohio Valley, points uh, east and southeast, it's going to be a lot colder tomorrow. This is uh, tomorrow morning. We could see negative six degree temperatures in southern Indiana and portions of Kentucky over here near Louisville. Some of these areas do still have power outages to be concerned about, so get ready for that. Ten degrees around Des Moines, seven, eight degrees up here near Pittsburgh, and even down here near Atlanta, 23, 24 degrees. Along the coast down here near Myrtle Beach, 27, Savannah, 28. It's going to be cold. There are frost and freeze warnings going going out as far south as into north central Florida. So just be ready for the cold because it is coming and it's not going anywhere. In fact, the latest Euro model shows this large area of below average temperatures sticking around for the foreseeable future. Now, I think some of the coldest temperatures are going to come over here in the Ohio Valley over into West Virginia and Virginia, where we still have a lot of power outages thanks to the ice and snow. I think the coldest temperatures are going to be on Friday in the morning, where some of us will be 35 degrees below normal, which will once again put a lot of us at or below zero be prepared for that. I'm hoping that a lot of the power issues are going to be uh, solved by then, but there are some places that expect to see power outages for more than five days. So just trying to give you a little bit of a heads up here. The cold's going to sink down and stick around in Florida as well, where a lot of the entire peninsula of Florida on Friday morning will be a good 15 to 20 degrees below normal. And also we've got the cold air sticking around over here in Texas. Now this cold air, once again, it's not going anywhere. The Climate Prediction Center uh, continues to paint the vast majority of the lower 48 at near or much below normal through January 20th. So once again, it's pretty much as far out as we can see, we expect to be below normal. So get ready for a continued active winter pattern because when the cold air is here, it doesn't push the storm systems out. The storms keep coming. They just interact with that cold air and sometimes bring us ice and snow. Speaking of snow, today we're going to see some of that over here around Denver where we have winter storm warnings in effect. This snow will persist through the day and kind of die out overnight. And then our attention is going to go over here towards the Great Lakes where we're going to have a lot of lake effect and lake enhanced snow. Lake enhanced snow is the snow that's going to happen along the Appalachian Mountains here as a result of the lifted moisture hitting the mountain peaks. But there's also going to be lake effect snow right off of the lakes. Probably going to be a lot of it, especially off of Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. But there is going to be a big persistent snow band from the upper peninsula of Michigan down into Ohio that will also bring some hefty snow for y'all. And remember, it's going to be cold, so it's going to pile up quickly. Now, our attention is going to switch over to this piece of energy right here that's going to sink down from Canada into the Dakota is bringing moderate to heavy snow on Wednesday into Thursday. Watch it come down and interact with this plume of moisture coming from the Pacific and the Gulf, and it's painting some pink in uh, Texas. Once again, we're going to have cold air in place, freezing rain potentially in southern Texas on Thursday morning. This could spread out into Austin and Dallas by Thursday afternoon. From this point, we're just going to be watching these two systems. The earlier these two systems phase together, the farther west the snow will be impressive, if that makes sense. Okay, so some some earlier model runs were showing this system interacting with this one earlier, and that actually led to a larger snow likelihood for Texas and Oklahoma and places over here. But the latest NAN model delays that phasing quite a bit, and it's not until the storm gets into the uh, deep south that we really start to see that snow shield start to expand. Now, don't put too much stock into this. This is a trend, but uh, it doesn't mean that our forecast has changed uh, significantly, but it is something to watch. Maybe that on the back side here near Dallas and Austin, we get a little bit less of the wintry precipitation and uh, we start to focus a little bit more farther east on uh, the winter side of our storm. But this is just one model run, okay? I'm showing it to you for context. Look at that though, a uh, pretty big southern storm on the radar here for Friday as the storm continues to move east. Also, the farther east this phasing happens, uh, the more likely it is that we might actually see this thing go up the coast and potentially cause a decent storm for uh, our, our 
folks in the mid-Atlantic up into the uh, I-95 corridor. So lots to talk about here. This is going to be a hard one to forecast because these storms are not very common. This is a rare winter storm, especially if the Dallas-Fort Worth region ends up seeing four inches of snow or so, which is still on the table. That's only happened a handful of times in the past 50 years. So our models are trained on historical data. They don't have a lot to work off of here. So this one's going to be harder to nail down than our last one, which was kind of like a slam dunk forecast. Now, here's a better way to view the precipitation types here. This is the GEFS ensemble. Instead of just looking at one model run, we're looking at an average, a mean of a bunch of different ones put together. And this still shows a lot of Texas receiving mixed precipitation on Thursday, but it still shows that precipitation shield a little bit farther north than what we were looking at yesterday. It does show the phasing with the energy from the north a little bit earlier, and it continues to show quite a bit of snow falling for our folks in northern Texas, southeast Oklahoma, Arkansas, and honestly, my confidence is growing. If this takes a little bit more of a southern turn or a northern turn, I think that Memphis is pretty much a shoe-in for some winter weather here. Little Rock, you guys as well. I would definitely start getting prepared there for some sort of a winter storm. It could be a few inches of snow to several inches of snow and maybe even a little bit of ice. So that's the one area where I'm quite confident that uh, we're going to have something going on there. Uh, and then, of course, I think up here into Middle Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky, we could be looking at a decent winter storm ongoing early in the morning on Saturday. And then the big question is, what happens with this on the East Coast? Does it turn into a nor'easter? Does it turn into a big blizzard for our big cities over here? Or does it just kind of slide off into the ocean and just kind of skirt the area with some snow? Uh, that's a question that's still up in the air. Right now, there's a good chance for some snow on Saturday over here, but we won't know the intricate details, I guess, until probably tomorrow. Now, here's a good way to contextualize the uncertainty that we have. All right, this is the GEFS ensembles, an average of a bunch of different model runs showing us the probability of having six inches of snow or more on the ground uh, by Sunday. Now, most of this would fall Thursday and Friday, of course, over here, but we have a really good probabilities on the table for Little Rock and Memphis. Once again, 50, 60 percent, six inches or more. That's a big deal this far out. But notice how a lot of northern Texas is cut out now on the latest uh, GFS model runs. But there's such a difference with the Euro. Look at the Euro. It's still farther south. It still has decent probabilities over the DFW area. It shifts everything a little bit farther south here. So there's still a lot of uncertainty with our most reliable models. And that just tells me that, once again, this is going to be a hard one to forecast. There's not a lot of historical data to work off of here. We might come right down to now casting this one. Our overall probabilities of seeing more than four inches of snow, though, officially from the Weather Prediction Center, we've got a 50 percent chance or so from Little Rock back down towards Wichita Falls around the Red River region. That's a safe way of looking at it. You know, if the northern trends continue, this is a good place to expect around four inches of snow or more. As we move farther east, we've got similar probabilities for the entire state of Tennessee. And similar to what we've got going on in Dallas, this is going to be a tough one to nail down for Birmingham. I feel sorry for James Spann. Atlanta, you guys are going to be right on that line where a subtle shift is going to make this a rainstorm for you or a big snowstorm. Regardless of what happens here, we're getting to crunch time. We have to start nailing down our forecasts and that's why the National Weather Service has went ahead and started issuing winter storm watches uh, from Dallas up into southeastern Oklahoma, northwestern Louisiana even, and of course the entire state of Arkansas at some point will be under a winter storm watch or warning. These are going to pour out today across this region and it's going to happen very fast and if you want to watch that happen, I invite you to watch it with Yalbot. That's right, in real time, as the warnings are issued and as the forecast changes, Yalbot on our 24-7 channel over on the Ryan Hall Y'all Extra channel will keep you up to date. The moment those warnings are issued, the moment anything changes, it zooms in, it shows you what's going on, and it'll even show you the radar, the future cast for the storm as we go into the future. This is on 24-7. It's 100% free. Go take advantage of it and go subscribe to that channel, Ryan Hall Y'all Extra. There's a link in the description. Description. So that's pretty much all the weather talk I have for you today. I'm sorry we can't be any more specific just yet. Some people are already putting out forecasts for 18 inches of snow in Dallas. You know, if you're a snow lover, I hope that happens. If you're not a snow lover, I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> 
But the thing is, is like I'm, t- I'm telling y'all, anybody that's putting out a solid forecast right now is getting themselves in trouble because there's going to be a lot of waffling. What I'm going to do tomorrow is I am going to, no matter how uncertain we are, I am going to give you my best guess on snowfall totals for everybody from Dallas up to Little Rock, Nashville even. I'll even take a stab at it for the Atlanta region. I'll probably wait until the next day to cover the Northeast just to have a little bit more data on our side. But once again, if you're in the highlighted area that we talked about earlier, with those higher probabilities for seeing more than six inches of snow, just go ahead and prepare for about six inches of snow. No harm, no foul, right? We'll nail down the timing and the snow totals and everything tomorrow. So yeah, this is a fun one. Uh, Don't get mad at me. If tomorrow it's showing, you know, a 100 mile north trend, we're doing our best over here, okay? Thank you for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have daily updates. And uh, especially if this ends up impacting the Dallas region, the Little Rock region, and the Memphis region, we're definitely going to be live during the storm. So turn notifications on so you don't miss that. Thank you for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.